few weeks ago, the CrossFit community lost Jacob Morris, a teen athlete, due to heart complications. His friends and family created a tribute workout, which was one of the last CrossFit workouts that he did. So this week, we're going to do that workout. Brandon, what is that? So it'll start 50 wall balls and then 40 cal ski, 30 dumbbell snatches, alternating arms, 20 box jump overs, and then you'll finish with 15 bar muscle ups. Hello friends, welcome to Throwdown. My name is Brandon Dorman. I'm Max El Haj. I'm Mia Gianelli. If you're new to this series, this is where we announce a workout and invite all of you to do it with our training think tank community. We do the workout a week ahead on site and then we provide a demo, strategy, and tips. This week we have our coach Kyle Ruth demoing the workout. But before we get started, this week we're launching our TTT60 program. We had a lot of people talk to us about not having enough time to work out, so we created one workout per day that's CrossFit style that can be done within one hour. We're also launching our new training phase of the design. In the design, we have a CrossFit path, a strength path, and an engine path, and the TTT60 program is actually part of that CrossFit path. So if you want some more information on that, you can check out our YouTube channel or go to trainingthinktank.com. This week, Kyle Roos is gonna be our demo. 50 wall balls to start. We got Mike in the background. I just want to draw a little bit of uh, awareness to him because Kyle beats him. Do you think Kyle we can do him. any videos where we don't make fun of Mike? No. <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> <laughs> I was making fun of him before he started this workout. <laughs> so strategy going into this, I think both of them were planning on breaking the wall balls and then picking pace on the ski, unbroken on the dumbbell snatches, unbroken on the box, and then you kind of got to go by feel on the muscle ups yeah. based on whatever your capacity is like. Watching the group on site though, most people went unbroken on the wall balls. Yeah, I don't know Including if, you. I did, yeah. I don't think I really blew up on it though. I, I did see some people that really seemed to extend themselves trying to get 50 unbroken and it doesn't really make a difference. Like. You'll notice here, Kyle actually breaks his wall balls, and I think Mike goes unbroken, but Kyle still beats him off. And then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Got him, Mike. Sorry, Mia. <laughs> and uh, Mike actually called him out, and we had to go back and video review to make sure Kyle actually did the appropriate number of wall balls, but I think this just means Mike is slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, squat speed plays a big role, especially as you get like over the 50 rep mark, yeah. right? Maybe in 20 or something like that doesn't really matter, but here it does. And it goes to show you don't have to go unbroken to do well. I think the way you should look at it is, if I go unbroken but it slows my ski down significantly, I should break, yeah. and then vice versa, right? <clears throat> the part on the ski that I think, uh, both of them got started pretty fast. I remember I was watching because I knew I was gonna do this eventually, and I wanted to beat you their scores. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Typical <laughs> <But> Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, in my head I thought, do the wall balls unbroken, get over the ski, just start pulling for like two or three cows, and then get to my working pace, which generally, Generally, I tell people, get to your working pace as quickly as possible, but I think in a workout like this, you can kind of use 40 straight cows as an opportunity to be like a little bit slow, then fast working pace, and then throttle back just a little bit at the end so you can transition quick and get to the next movement, as opposed to extending yourself for all 40 cows. So it's like little manipulations you can do to still maintain fast transitions in a workout like this. Yeah. Do you know around what pace they were holding here? Yeah, uh, they were both like, Mid 1200s. Yeah, 1250 to 13, yeah. 15, or whatever it goes to. Yeah. John making an appearance. Yeah. Hi, John. <laughs> uh, I, I will say the ski of all the kind of like the cyclical things that we see, especially with the C2 machines, is the one that if you're good at, you can really make a big difference, yeah. right? Most people, most males are still like at 1200, but there are some guys. I had a guy on site who made a, he was probably. 15 or 20 seconds behind getting to the ski, and then he held 14.50 the whole time because he's just a bigger dude, and he made up all the time. Next to me? Yeah, Rob. Yeah, I was like, well, how yeah. the hell did he just get off? Yeah, so I mean, he, he just held 14.50 to 1500 the entire time, and then that makes up a huge difference. Whereas like most males, or even most females, are kind of pretty, everyone's pretty close on the row or the bike. Yeah, I did, uh, I know I was judging Jordan on this, and he went out at that pace, and then kind of halfway into this, he blew, blew up. up a little bit, and he was down at 1,000, so I think you gotta kind of, really make sure that you're not blown up this early in the workout. Because for, sure. for me at least, I think the highest power output movement is the box jumps and then you're leading that right into doing a gymnastics movement. And if you're blown up on a gymnastics yeah. movement, it's very hard to 
keep working. He's off. Yeah. I think both of them did a pretty good job with their transition right over to the dumbbell. And you can't see Mike here, but I was standing kind of next to Mike, and they were literally just like rep, rep for rep. Yeah, it was so rep. close at this point. Yeah. I think also, too, like whatever these times are, if you have a better setup with uh, the ski ergs that move, there's probably like 15 to 20 seconds of just transition time that they lost by being in this type of environment, which for us, I mean, doesn't really matter because everyone was using the same setup. Yeah. But just for... Uh, for score purposes for people if they're trying to beat these or set expectations for themselves. I think a tighter setup could definitely take some time off of this. Dumbbell snatches for me are a really good breathing movement. Whenever I see them in a workout, especially at this 50-35 weight, I see it as just relax your breathing, calm down. You can move fairly quickly without really having to put forth too much effort. Yeah. yeah. Kyle said he was planning on breaking this before the workout started, mm -hmm. just like a really quick break. He said he got into him and he felt pretty good. And he obviously you could see Mike out of the corner of his eye and that he was moving fast. So he decided to stick with it. And I don't, I mean, I think going unbroken there makes sense for him. Yeah. The, uh, oh, and they're pretty much tied leading it. So Kyle the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike's bunnying too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, both of them have pretty good bounding mechanics. They get off the ground quickly. Yeah. You'll see, though, that they just get blown up. They're already, they're already past yeah. that red line. This strategy that Kyle's using here, I feel like if my heart rate's high, I could keep doing that. And yeah. it's, it can still be pretty quick. It's not as quick as bounding box jumps, but what? It's quicker than what they're doing yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the only way that I do them because I just blow up when I try to rebound. Yeah. I just try to step off quickly. You definitely lose some time to someone that's rebounding, but you can keep moving. Yeah. I, f I forget, I think it was Travis was, not Travis Mayer, Travis Holmquist was yep. right in front of me during this workout and he was rebounding and I was like, man, that's way faster, but I'm just not committed enough to try yeah. that right now because my heart rate was exploded. But I think that doesn't really necessarily change the outcome of this workout unless you're like going unbroken on everything. Well, on site, um, Luke got to the box behind all of you, and then he rebounded all of them and ended up winning the workout. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think mean, that was muscle-ups, though. His well, muscle-ups were fast, he, too, for They sure. were, but he made up a lot of ground on the box. Jumps. I would say at I least saw, 15 or 20 seconds, Yeah, I right? saw people yeah. lose a lot of time on that movement, and I think they kind of did, too. Lost yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Rob was at least 15 or 20 seconds ahead of Luke getting to the box, and then he lost another 10 or 15 because he isn't as good at rebounding. So yeah. that definitely helps. Now, if it was like 30 or 40 box jumps, that, that expands that time even more. Mm -hmm. You can see Kyle, he said his dip was uh, blowing up here, but his it pull still, fun. yeah, it yeah. looks so easy yeah. for him. It's almost frustrating when he stops in gymnastics. I'm like, are you really tired? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before the workout, just so everyone knows, yeah. he was doing strict bar muscle-ups to warm up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I think Mike did eight, seven, and yeah. Kyle did three sets, but Kyle's about to finish up right now, and Mike is like yeah. in the middle of his set of seven. So there's Kyle finishing, and then Mike's a couple seconds behind. There it is. Done. There you have it. 644 and 648 were their times. All right, we wanted to give you guys some scores for the male side. 620, Luke had the best score. 622 was Joey. 631 was Jackson. On the female side, Deb was the only one that finished the workout on site at 849. Shannon was 150, and then Ansley was at 146. All right, so we wanted to show you a couple of movement variations for the box jump. The fastest way is obviously going to be rebounding, so Mia will demo some of those. Just a lateral rebound getting on and off the box as quickly as possible. Another variation that you can do is a rebounding method, but where you stand up and take a, a kind of like a half step on top of the box. You can see you're doing that here. This is going to allow you to kind of control your heart rate a little bit more, but still allow you to rebound quickly. The last one's going to be a step off every single time. So she'll jump up, she'll step off, she'll jump back up. This is one that I would do because my rebounding is not as good and it'll keep your heart rate down, but allow you to continue to move. All right, now we want to show you a few movement variations for the ski erg. Mia's going to demo for us. The first one is going to be standing a little bit farther away from the ski, and it's more of a butt back and a hard hinge forward. She's using her body first and then pulling with her arms second. The second variation is going to be scooting up to the machine and now dropping more with your butt and hips, and you'll see a little bit more of a knee bend. It's worth playing around with both of these and seeing what's more efficient for sprinting, what's more efficient for a workout like this, and then what's more efficient for a longer ski if you have something like that in your training. All right, let's break this workout down. <laughs> So the number one priority in this workout is obviously to honor Jacob Morris and his memory, but we do want to talk about ways that you can improve your times, especially if you're going to test this year after year. Yeah, so starting with the wall balls, I think that obviously movement speed is going to be super important there, and I think the number of reps there is that if you want a competitive time, 
unbroken, one break, or two breaks at the maximum, and those breaks gotta be relatively quick. So ball hits the target, drops down to the ground, and pretty much like one breath, and then you're squatting down and picking it back up. Yeah. You're, sorry, the other thing you can think about too is your squat speed. So you saw Kyle break in the demo, but still beat Mike off, and that was just because his squat was a little bit faster. So things like that can help. Yeah, second movement. The ski erg, I think there's a couple different ways you can think about this. If you're a bigger athlete, you can probably slow down your strokes per minute yeah. and just pull a little bit harder, kind of use your body weight. If you're a lighter, lighter athlete or maybe a little bit shorter, you're probably gonna have to lower the damper and speed up your strokes per yeah, minute. Yeah, a lot of people too on the ski erg, they're very armsy, and I felt like I found myself in this workout trying not to get the terminal extension of my triceps, just knowing that muscle ups are probably gonna sure. be the thing that limits me. So I think just thinking about like, what type of muscle groups and limitations you're gonna have on that machine that potentially could lead into you slowing down at the end. I think this is a Kevin Hart <coughs> quote, but I think of skiing as like skiing with my chest and throwing my chest down and um, that helps me a lot. For a lot of females, you're gonna be slower on the ski, that's just, we're smaller. Um, but focusing more on using your chest to drive down versus... When did Kevin that, Hart yeah, say that? That? <laughs> <laughs> that entire time I'm thinking about, when did uh, Kevin Hart say this? Say it with your chest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with ski erging? <laughs> I was like, Kevin Hart ski ergs? I'm like, that's awesome, man. He's doing CrossFit now, everything. All right, next movement, <laughs> dumbbell snatches. I think the big thing is learning how to transition from the top. So like mo moving quickly and getting the dumbbell into your next hand instead of fumbling it around. Yep. Yeah, if you don't know how to switch the dumbbell in the air, you need to learn. Agreed, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hart also <laughs> said that. <laughs> the, uh, next movement's box jumps. We showed some box jump strategies on the floor. I think you gotta pick the one that allows you to get through that 20 reps as fast as you can while also not blowing you up for the final movement, which yeah, the, is the bar muscle ups. And that's basically on feel, right? Some, yeah. some males and females are gonna be able to go unbroken, but most of us are gonna have to break these up because when you get past that 10 mark, most people are like, okay, I might have to go to single. So make sure that you're smart with it, but one of the things that I told my athletes was take some risks, like have some fun and see where you're at now in your training as you do muscle up progressions. Yeah, I think just keep your rest times as little as possible if you break there and just try to push the pace, even if that means like getting to failure, getting off, doing a single, getting off, jumping back up, and just really try that to minimize the rest cadence as much as possible there. I For saw some people on site have uh, good <clears throat> Oh man, I forgot the word now. You guys threw me off. It's the Kevin Hart. <laughs> Good Kevin Hart. <laughs> had success with doing a big set to open, even if they had to go like really small twos and ones afterwards. At least you get a big chunk out of the way. What's success the word you forgot or you yeah. just came up with that? Okay. No, that was the word I forgot. Okay, good. So the big takeaways are listen to Kevin Hart, make sure that you <laughs> ski with your chest, and Project Pat, take us away. <laughs> It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.